the Gulf Stream Guild Show. With Robert Benchley, Constance Bennett, Maxie Rosenblum, Gertrude Neeson, and the King Sisters. The music of Oscar Bradley, and your master of ceremonies for tonight, Errol Flynn. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Welcome to the Gulf Screen Guild Show. This program, sponsored by the Gulf Oil Companies, is the motion picture industry's own radio show for the benefit of the Motion Picture Relief Fund. And I feel it a great honor to be representing all Hollywood tonight in being your master of ceremonies and introducing our stars to you. This week's show is a review written by A. Dorian Otvost and directed by Mark Sandwich. And now, Gulf's first star for tonight, a young lady whose lovely voice has thrilled you countless times from the stage, radio, and screen. Ladies and gentlemen, the glamorous Gertrude Neeson. Gertrude Neeson opens our golf show tonight with a song from Rogers and Hart's new hit, The Boys from Syracuse. Gertrude sings, This Can't Be Love. This can't be love because I feel so well. No clouds, no sorrows, no sighs. This can't be love, I get so dizzy spell. My head is not in the sky. My heart does not stand still. Just hear it beat. This is too sweet to be loved. It can't be love because I feel so well. And still I love to look in your eyes. What is this thing of love? It's funny thing. That was beautiful, Gertrude, beautiful. Oh, thank you very much, Daryl. You know, I wouldn't tell this to everybody, but I've always had the idea I could be a great singer, too. Well, I never knew that, Errol. Let's hear you sing. Hey, that's a swell idea. Come on, Errol, give us oh, a oh, song. Oh, no, no. Just a minute, John Conti. You can't coax me. I learned it isn't safe for me to sing to any bigger audience than a hot and cold water faucet and a cake of soap. <laughs> and then only when the bathroom door is locked. Well, Errol, you must have learned that from experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my privilege to bring you a very dear friend of mine and to give him the introduction that he's earned in the field of humor. When you introduce a humorist like Mark Twain, you say, I give you that notable, celebrated, renowned Mr. Mark Twain. When you introduce a humorist like George Ade, you say, I give you the eminent, distinguished, dignified Mr. George Ade. And when you introduce a humorist like George Bernard Shaw, you say, I give you that prominent, brilliant, illustrious Mr. George Bernard Shaw. Ladies and gentlemen... <coughs> Bob Benchley. Thank you, Earl. That was splendid. I'm very happy that you gave me that introduction. Are uh, you? Yeah. Yes. Now, if I ever join the Foreign Legion, I'll really have something to forget. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Bob. What was the matter with it? Is the introduction a little too flowery? Flowery? No, I'd say it was a little on the weedy side. Oh. <laughs> Why, that hurts me. I spent a lot of time over that, and I thought it was very flowery. Well, you may have a point there, Errol. 
Let's just analyze the introduction. It was beautiful, just like flowers. Colorful, like flowers. And it had a certain odor, too. <laughs> Not like flowers, though. Well, frankly, Bob, I didn't know any other way to introduce you. Oh, there are lots of ways to introduce people. For instance, I classify the way you introduced me as the actor type. Smooth and extremely clever in a hammy sort of way. <laughs> there are several other types that are just as easily classified. I don't quite follow you, Bob. Well, let's take the salesman type. If a salesman were introducing you, the first thing he'd do would be to knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Eh? Of course, there's no door there. In this case, it's the imaginary door to the audience's mind. <laughs> well, to continue. Now, uh, this is the salesman type of introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this week only we are running a special on Flynn, the arrow type of Flynn. We have thousands of written testimonials from many happy users of our 1939 arrow type Flynn. Here is what Mrs. Stella Oppenheimer has to say. Wow! <laughs> and that brings us to the apologetic type of introducer. Now, let's say he's introducing me. Not that that makes him apologetic, you know. No, Bob, it certainly helps. <laughs> well, Flynn, I hate you. <laughs> now for the apologetic or confused type. Go something like this. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I was called upon to introduce a fellow we all know and all love. Well, some of us love him. <laughs> Although I've heard people say that he's a... Well, <clears throat> this fellow has just got over... <laughs> just got over a broken leg, which can be very painful. My Aunt Minnie broke her leg. Uh, it was the left one. No, the right one. <laughs> no, it was the left one. Or was it her arm? Well, here he is. Mr. Manfred Granifrance, Jr. Well, that's very nice, Bob. Well, what type of introduction do you think I should use? Well, that's hard to say offhand. I'd have to delve into your habits. You know, we all have habits. Personally, I have quite a few habits. Oh, oh, yes, yes. You couldn't look that bad without quite a few habits. <laughs> well, I try to lead a normal life. When I wake up in the morning, I no sooner open my eyes than I throw off my oxygen tent and jump out of bed. <laughs> but getting back to you, how are your muscular reactions? Do you fall asleep slowly or quickly when you're watching a movie? Well, depends on whether it's one of your pictures, Rob. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I yeah. try. Yes, <laughs> me. That's okay. Well, that gives me a pretty good idea of you. Fine. Well, Bob, I have an introduction to make right now. What type do you think I ought to use? Well, I think you should be the effervescent or fizzy type. Hey, let me do the introduction for you. Fine. Go right ahead. All right. Hiya, folks. I want you to meet some swell guys. They shoot a wicked game of pool, smoke the best of cigars, and their pants are always pressed. Uh... Who am I introducing, Al? The King's sister. <laughs> For heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> 